Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. William Nichols, an Associate Professor of Medicine and Laboratory Medicine at Mayo Clinic, as well as a consultant in hematology and the Special Coagulation Laboratory at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Nichols presents a case study that demonstrates how pre- and post-analytic variables of the patient and blood samples can have confounding effects on the laboratory evaluation of coagulation disorders. Thank you, Dr. Nichols, for presenting with us today. Thank you for the introduction. This case-based presentation introduces diagnostic considerations for prolonged APT and or PT coagulation test results, including pathophysiologic classification, sick fail, and summarizing laboratory and clinical approaches for evaluation. I have no disclosures. As you view this presentation, consider the following important points regarding testing for prolonged APT and PT. How is the testing going to be used in your practice? When should the test be used? How will results affect patient management? This slide outlines the intrinsic, extrinsic, and common procoagulant pathways that are amplifying cascades of coagulation complexes, enzymes, cofactors, substrates, phospholipid, and calcium, resulting in generation of thrombin and transformation of fibrinogen to fibrin the endpoint that is detected by clotting time tests. The APTT test is initiated by adding a contact activator to citrated plasma along with phospholipid and calcium and reflects the intrinsic and common procoagulant pathways and components. The PT test is initiated by adding tissue factor phospholipid and calcium to citrated plasma and reflects the extrinsic and common procoagulant pathways and components. The DRVVT, dilute Russell's Viper Venom Time, test assesses the common procoagulant pathway and is performed by adding diluted phospholipid and Russell's Viper Venom to directly activate factor 10, along with calcium and is mainly used for detecting lupus anticoagulant inhibitors along with the APT test for detecting LA. The thrombin time test assesses the final transformation of fibrinogen to fibrin and is performed by adding exogenous thrombin to citrated plasma with or without calcium and is mainly used to detect anticoagulants such as heparin or direct thrombin inhibitors. There are four basic causes of prolonged clotting time test results. Coagulation factor deficiency or deficiencies, coagulation inhibition, both can sometimes be present, or neither, spurious results. A mixing test of patient and normal plasma is typically used for initial laboratory evaluation of prolonged clotting times and requires interpretation. This graph shows APTT mixing study results for two patient plasmas, one with a coagulation inhibitor, such as a lupus anticoagulant, and one with coagulation factor deficiency, such as hemophilia A or B. The vertical axis shows APTT test results in seconds and the arrow notes the upper limit of the normal range. The horizontal axis shows different mixtures of normal and patient plasmas. Both of the patient plasmas show similar APTT prolongations. At the far right, no mixing or dilution. Mixing plasmas one to one, 50% normal and 50% patient, typically results in APTT correction into the normal reference range for deficient plasma, whereas the inhibitor plasma fails to correct into the normal reference range. There are eight general categories of causes of prolonged clotting time test results 
that can be recalled with the mnemonic sick fail. Spurious. There are many conditions that are very common pre-analytical causes of abnormal coagulation testing results, and the next slide will focus on this category. Inhibitors are also common and include specific inhibitors against a coagulation factor, nonspecific inhibitors such as a lupus anticoagulant, and global inhibitors such as heparin or direct-acting anticoagulants. Congenital hereditary factor deficiencies are relatively common. Factors 1, 2, 5, 7, 10, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, and unnumbered proteins including von Willebrand factor, and usually occur individually, that is deficiency of only one factor or protein, and vary in severity and significance. Vitamin K deficiency is relatively common, such as in neonates and hospitalized individuals. Factor deficiencies acquired usually are multiple deficiencies with patterns, or sometimes only a single factor deficiency may occur on an acquired basis. Anticoagulants are increasingly ubiquitous and include warfarin, heparin and low molecular weight heparin, and direct acting inhibitors of thrombin or coagulation factor 10A. ICF, intravascular coagulation and fibrinolysis, or DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, there are many causes and manifestations of ICF DIC, including prolonged clotting time tests. Liver disease can cause a typical pattern of abnormal coagulation test results with varying severity and significance. Spurious coagulopathies usually reflect pre-analytical or pre-testing conditions of the patient and or the blood plasma sample, including the many potential conditions listed here. Elevated hematocrit and or incomplete filling of evacuated collection tubes can cause spurious prolongation of the APT and or PT. See the next slide with explanations. Collecting and testing or submitting other than citrated plasma, a blue top tube, samples such as EDTA anticoagulated plasma or serum is another cause. Anticoagulants present in the patient and or plasma sample such as heparin from patient treatment or in a line draw blood specimen or other anticoagulant effects, warfarin or direct acting anticoagulants or effects of other therapy such as fibrinolytic therapy with tissue plasminogen activator or DDAVP, desmopressin or transfusions, plasma, cryoprecipitate, factor concentrate can all affect APTT and PT test results. Many other conditions, including difficult venipuncture causing clotting in vitro, lipemia, hemolysis, and or icterus, which interfere with photooptical testing, suboptimal sample processing conditions, including improper temperatures, too warm, too cold, or not cold enough and or improper centrifugation to deplete platelets before freezing plasma for subsequent testing can all adversely affect APTT and or PT test results. Be aware, suspicious, these are not rare. The normal hematocrit image on the left shows that the one-tenth volume of citrate anticoagulant present in fixed amount in an evacuated blood collection tube is distributed into the plasma that comprises about 60 percent of the collected blood and the citrate lowers the free calcium ion thereby stopping plasma from clotting until the plasma is recalcified for clotting time testing. The high or elevated hematocrit image on the right shows that the fixed one-tenth volume of citrate anticoagulant is distributed into a much smaller volume of plasma compared with the normal hematocrit sample. 
resulting in excessive lowering or complexing of calcium ion and resistance to recalcification, usually causing spuriously prolonged APT and or PT test results. Here is our case. A 16-year-old male with cyanotic congenital heart disease, reflecting transposition of the great vessels, was to have cardiac bypass surgery performed the following day. Preoperative lab testing showed elevated hemoglobin and hematocrit, normal platelet count, prolonged PT, and prolonged APTT. Now what should we do? Should the patient proceed with heart surgery? In other words, are the prolonged PT and APTT simply spurious test results reflecting the high hematocrit? What evaluations should be performed? Should we obtain A, more clinical information or history review, B, more testing, C, both? What are the most likely diagnoses? A, spuriously prolonged PT and APT reflecting high hematocrit. B, are other causes possibly present? In this case, the initial evaluations included obtaining relevant clinical information, including bleeding history review. At age two years, the patient had a wound hematoma after heart surgery. By itself, this is perhaps not abnormal. At age four years, he cut his tongue and bled for days and was transfused. This is clearly and significantly abnormal. At age 10 years, he had oozing after dental extractions. By itself, perhaps not abnormal. Recent cardiac catheterization was followed by oozing from groin puncture. By itself, perhaps not abnormal. The patient led a relatively inactive life reflecting heart disease. Therefore, he had few hemostatic challenges. The mother's brother has a lifelong bleeding history. This is very suspicious for possible presence of an inherited bleeding disorder. Questions. Is this a normal versus abnormal history? The constellation of bleeding events suggests it is likely that a bleeding disorder is present. Is this person a mild, moderate, or severe bleeder? This would be a moderately severe bleeding history. Severe bleeding history would typically also include spontaneous bleeding events occurring without provocation. Is the bleeding disorder hereditary? And if so, is it autosomal or X-linked? Yes, likely hereditary and could be either autosomal or X-linked based on available information. Preoperative subsequent coag testing was performed using collection tubes with citrate anticoagulant content adjusted by nomogram for the elevated hematocrit with these results. The PT was normal on retesting. The APTT remained significantly prolonged, and the unactivated PTT was also prolonged with mixing study demonstrating correction into the normal range. The thrombin time was normal, essentially excluding heparin effects. Questions. Why was the PT initially prolonged but subsequently normal. It was spuriously prolonged, reflecting high hematocrit, and normal with subsequent citrate-adjusted plasma sample collection and testing. What is the most likely diagnosis for the prolonged APTT and PTT? One, the mixing study shows correction and suggests coagulation factor deficiency rather than inhibition, such as from lupus anticoagulant. Two, family history together with hemostatic history review raises possibility of X-linked hemophilia A or B. Additional testing? 
Yes, coagulation factor activity assays such as 8, 9, 11, and probably factor 12 would be appropriate. Additional testing demonstrated normal values for factor 8 and for factor 11, but factor 9 was very low, 3%. Diagnostic of hemophilia B of moderate severity. Diagnoses in this case are two with respect to hemostasis. One, spurious clotting times prolongations reflecting elevated hematocrit. Two, hemophilia B moderately severe, also known as Christmas disease. This individual was able to undergo cardiac surgery that was managed with factor 9 infusions. The case has been previously published as listed. Subsequent DNA-based testing demonstrated a glutamic acid substitution at residue arginine 248 in the catalytic domain of factor 9 responsible for hemophilia B. The mother also carries this mutation. In summary, firstly, remember the eight categories of causes for prolonged clotting times. Secondly, recommendations for evaluating prolonged APTT or PTT include obtaining and reviewing relevant clinical information if possible. If indicated, consider repeating APTT and or PT testing locally with careful attention to patient status and sample collection and processing conditions. If prolonged APTT and or PT persist and are unexplained, consider obtaining testing such as a prolonged clotting times profile, MML number 83097 or PROCT. This algorithm depicts the Mayo MML prolonged clotting times profile with reflexive testing. The profile testing starts with the APT and PT along with the DRVVT and thrombin time or TT and also includes measurements of fibrinogen and fibrin D dimer and soluble fibrin monomer complex. Today we don't have time to further discuss this algorithm nor all the details of the sick fail listing and all the causes of APT or PT prolongation. Perhaps these will later be subject of an MML Thank Hot you. Topics presentation. Thank you, Dr. Nichols. If you enjoyed this case-based presentation, please join our faculty and staff in San Diego on December 2nd for a symposium entitled Algorithmic Approaches to Coagulopathy Testing, Case-Based Illustrations, which precedes the 58th American Society of Hematology annual meeting. Thank you.